The train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. I'm sure it didn't escape anyone's notice that I neglected to talk about several key points in my previous story. I admit the reason for that is I was feeling a little… overwhelmed, what with it being right after returning from the war and all that. I won't discuss all of them now, as some are better suited for another time. What I will say is that the new government I referred to was planning to nationalise the coal and rail industries of Great Britain. The former began to take effect from the 12th of July 1946. The latter was to start from January 1st 1948. Though that was nearly two years away from this particular story, the groundwork was already being laid for its implementation. This included building new engines and rolling stock to a standardised format, and grouping together certain regions as joint railways. Sodor became one such joint railway, and effectively, we stopped being middies or nor'easters, though such terms took a long time to fade away. Mr. Zorro became our director, and he did a sterling job given the enormity of the task before him. And though he was criticised by the board for not replacing Colin and Lily sooner, he held firm for a long time, wisely taking into account our feelings on such a move. However, he couldn't hold out indefinitely, not as the workload began increasing and on June 2nd, 1946, the two new engines arrived on Sodor. Gentlemen, I would like to introduce our newest additions. Say hello to Peckett and Samantha. How do you do, lads? Hello everyone, nice to meet you. Likewise, welcome to the island of Sodor. Thanks, you've got a lovely little operation here. Reminds me very much of my old line. And where might that be? The Somerset and Dorset Railway. And what about you, Samantha? I worked for a colliery in South Wales before it was closed during a recent inspection. Ain't that a good sign? One colliery closed and a couple dozen workers laid off at Marston Heights, all before the NCB has even gotten started. Doesn't give me much hope for when we go national. Are you finished, Diesel? Huh? Oh, um, yes, sir. Sorry. Alright, now that introductions have been exchanged, it's time to get to work. Peckett, if memory serves, you have branch line experience, correct? I do, sir. I handle passenger and freight services on the line between Glastonbury and Wales. Excellent. We need an engine with a bit of versatility. Donald, take Peckett to the China Clay Pits. That delivery you'll be making later today, I want Peckett to go with you so we can learn the route. Aye, sir. Samantha, since you're relatively inexperienced, I'll be pairing you with Toby here. Listen to him, learn from him, and you won't go wrong. Toby, focus mostly on shunting. Yes, sir. All right, so if there are no questions, let's get to work. Zorro! Yes, Dennis? We just got a call from the manager of the Scarlowe Railway. He wants to know why those spare rails weren't delivered yesterday. Because there was a points failure at Knapford trapping the train in a siding. Didn't you know that? No, sir. No one told me. I told Carter. 
and to think I thought managing just my section of Sodor was an ordeal. All right, I'll call back the scar. <coughs> 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 Ugh. Ugh. Son of a... Mr. Zorro, are you okay? Yes. Yes, I'm fine. <clears throat> Just a... a slight case of the flu. <clears throat> so, uh, as I was saying, I'll call back the Scarlowy Railway. Hopefully we can get those rails to them by noon today. Yes, sir. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, Dennis. I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. You know, for someone who's relatively inexperienced, you're catching on very quickly. Well, as I said, I used to work at a colliery, so I'm no stranger to shunting trucks. No, I don't suppose you would be. Have you ever handled coaches before? No, never. But I'd like to give it a whirl. That's good because a passenger ship will be docking in about half an hour. Can you take those coaches to the station over at the terminal? Is that the one on the west side of the harbour? Yes, next to the Keys. Not a problem. Good. Now before you set off, I have to tell you coaches are not like trucks. You do need to handle them more carefully. I can manage that. No worries. My goodness! Be careful! Come now, I barely touched you! Barely touched us! You nearly smashed us through the buffers! I could arrange that if you like! My, my! Aren't we a brute? Oh, belt up and come along! Oh, my! Oh, thank heavens, the ordeal is over! Oh, bust my buffers! What kind of rolling stock are you? Coaches, you imbecile! We're not meant to be thrashed about! You think that was a thrashing? My goodness! You wouldn't last one day in a coal mine! We're not designed to work in a coal mine, you idiot! I say, ladies! What is all this noise? Oh, Reginald, thank the Lord! Would you please tell this savage how to properly handle coaches? All right, Francine, settle down. I'm sorry, we haven't been introduced. I'm Reginald. I'm Samantha. Ah, so you're the new engine. A pleasure to meet you. Now, is there some sort of problem? Only that these snobs can't handle a light bump. It was far more than a light bump, I can assure you. Look, I'm an industrial engine. I'm used to handling trucks, not coaches. An industrial engine? I should have known. A proper engine would know better. Francine, I am surprised at you. Deriding an engine for her line of work. Most unbecoming. I'm sorry, Reginald. Don't apologize to me. Apologize to Samantha. I... Uh, I'm sorry. It's all right. And... I apologize to you too. Toby did advise me to be careful when handling coaches, but I suppose I need to learn how to be more... delicate. Well, I'm sure the next time you do shunt coaches, Francine and the others will be more than happy to offer some feedback. Wouldn't you, my dear? Of course we would. I appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you, Reginald, for your help here. My pleasure, Samantha. You can call me Sam if you like. Or Sammy. I don't mind either. In that case, you can call me Reggie, and welcome to Sodor. Thanks, I think I'm going to like it here very much. And we enjoyed having them on Sodor very much. It didn't take long for the new shunters to acclimatize to life on the island. They rapidly made friends with engines and people alike, and proved to be invaluable assets. Unfortunately, their arrival coincided with an unusual change in Mr. Zorro. In the following weeks, he appeared less frequently about the railway, and the few times he did show up, he was clearly distracted. Of course we asked him many times if anything was wrong, 
but he never gave a clear answer. And as what commonly happens in the absence of facts, rumours began to crop up. Rubbish! I saw him the other day. He was as fit as a fiddle. Charlie told me how Zorro was coughing his head off at Brendam recently. Since he smokes, I'm not surprised. What? It can't be good for you breathing that stuff into your lungs every day. Pretty silly if you ask me. His Majesty smokes. Would you call the King silly? And what about the engine crews? Maybe Zaro is silly. Given that I heard he and the headmistress of Wellsworth Primary were seen together recently. He's trying to get his granddaughter into that school, you twit. Oh, I guess it can't be problems with the missus. It might be. What do you mean? I got a cousin who works at the vicarage. He said Mrs. Zorro used to come by every Friday with a lunch platter for the workers, but she hasn't been seen there for nearly a month. It does sound like trouble at home. And that sounds like the end of lunch. Come on lads, back to the grindstone. How's it coming, lads? Um, we're almost done. Is something wrong, Robert? It's just, these tankers have seen better days. I know, I know. But we don't have the money to carry out a proper overhaul on all our trucks. Minimal maintenance is all we can afford. I'm not overly worried, Hector. The bogies are fine. It's just the brake pipes have me a little worried. We examined them thoroughly last week and they were fine. I'm sure they'll be fine for today's delivery. I hope so. for crying out loud. All right there, Henry? Hardly. The brakes on my train have locked up. <sighs> I feel like such a prat. Why? I heard a leak come from one of my trucks, but instead of stopping to have my crew check it... Peckett, are you even listening? Henry, there's smoke coming from your train. What? How did that happen? Forget how. We need to get out of... Oh, no. That's Gordon! Crikey! He must be coming through with the express! If these tankers blow, we gotta get this train off the main line! I can't! The brakes have locked! Peckett, what about a milkshake? Gus, you're a genius! A milkshake? What in blazes are you talking about? Watch and learn! Can you run that by me again? The leak in the brakes caused the blocks to grind together. The heat from the friction resulted in the contents of a particularly bad set of brake shoes expanding, and after the emergency pressure relief valve burst, they caught on fire. Bust my buffers! I didn't know that was possible. Does that sort of thing happen a lot? No, but when it does, it's usually because the rolling stock in question has been poorly maintained. That's a pity. I would have thought the oil depot would have been more conscientious about keeping its trucks in working order. Me too. Needless to say, we'll be conducting a swift investigation on the matter. 
and I'm ordering all fuel tankers be shunted pending a thorough inspection. That's not going to sit too well with a lot of our clients. We can always tell them no point in crying over spilt milk. Okay, that's a good one. And so was using the milk to put out the fire. Great job, Peckett. Yes, indeed. Well done. I never thought I'd ever see a milkshake put into action on Sodor. Hang about. This milkshake thing is the real deal? Of course. It's something of a running joke among the fire and rescue service. Using milk to extinguish a blaze. And we have the Somerset and Dorset Railway to thank for that. Why? That's all we had during the summer of 1936. The same year we were going through a particularly bad drought. So you smashed up milk trucks? Not all the time. But when we were pulling a train carrying milk and we happened to be passing a fire... Well, you might say we were duty bound to act. I just hope Mr. Zorro sees it that way. I'm sure he will. That is, if we see him long enough to explain the situation. I don't suppose you lads know what's going on with him. No. Do you? No. But I hope he provides an explanation soon. Some of the rumours going around are very disconcerting. How's it looking, Doctor? It's not good. You can't put it off any longer, Mr. Zorro. If you have any hope of beating this, you need to begin the treatment now. Can I afford one more day? What on earth for? I need to tell my engines what's going on. You mean you've been keeping it a secret from them? What about the rest of your staff? Some of them know. The board, mostly. I couldn't very well hide this from them. But my engines deserve to hear what's wrong. And they deserve to hear it from me. Mr. Zorro, I cannot stress strongly enough how urgently you need this procedure. One day, Doctor. Just one more day. <sighs> one day. But if you don't come back of your own volition, I'll drag you in myself. Understood. Thank you. Good morning, Engines. Good morning, Mr. Zorro. You're here early. Yes. That's because I have something very important to tell you. And yes, it's about why I've been so scarce these past few weeks. What's the matter, sir? I have lung cancer. I was diagnosed about a month ago. The good news is, it's an early stage of the disease. The bad news is, is I have to undergo an operation. And after that, I'll be taking part in clinical trials for a new kind of cancer treatment. What sort of treatment, sir? It's called chemotherapy. I don't know anything about it, only that if it works, it will revolutionize the treatment of all cancers. But needless to say, this will be a long and arduous road for me. And whatever the results, I won't be able to continue performing my duties on this railway. As such, I am resigning as director. Well, this... This is a real blow. I think I speak for all of us when I say, we're sorry this has happened to you. Thank you, Toby. And I apologize to all of you for not telling you sooner. I guess I was in denial. But all my affairs are in order. So if this operation goes awry, at least my family will be taken care of. Um, who's going to replace you, sir? The board knows about my condition. They'll be electing a director in a few weeks' time. Until then, the acting controller will be... Basil Corbett. You could almost hear the collective churning of boilers when that announcement was made. There was intense unease across the rest of the island when word of this arrangement spread. Basil Corbett had long been a part of Sodor's railway history, and not always in a positive way. As to the kind of man he was, and the specifics of his tenure as acting controller, well that will have to wait until next time.